Okay, good afternoon. I am Derek Hogan here at North Georgia Technical College. I've got a little video for you all this afternoon here at Practical Machinist that I wanted to show you all about how to do some maze control programming on a lathe. Um, this is a part that I have my lathe operations two class make. Um, one of the things I have them make, well, I'll just show you the entire thing so you can get a, you can get a, a, a ideal what we're talking about one of the things I'll have them make is an entire um, bottle jack and I have some students to get really close to get it complete and get it put together but it's all the different components that go together to make this piece right here it's quite a little fascinating project with some uh, interesting operations you have to do both for the lathe and mill well one of the pieces is this needle valve right here this is what opens up the valving to let the fluid return to the cylinder up in here so basically the red reservoir that is um, from the cylinder so that allows you to be able to depressurize it so if i turn this into where you can see the wireframe you should be able to see yeah there you go you can see it in there so you can see the needle valve goes into this piece right here and it seals off this port here the needle valve is open it allows the fluid to come back out of the cylinder and into the reservoir back up in here so it's an important piece of this, of this well one of the things we have started to do with our students is we're you know introducing more and more conversational programming on the mazak lathe that we have and i was trying to figure out something i could have them do and i saw this needle valve would be a great piece for that um, it's got some threads cut on it. It's got some chamfers. It's a relatively simple piece. Now, to do the programming here, I can take an existing drawing and I can create a maze tool program from it. And that'll work. I can work with this piece right here and make it work. And I'll have to have a few more dimensions that I have on this, but um, I made a few changes as I did this last, but I can make this work. One of the things I have found that works really well is to design the drawing. If I have the ability to do this, to think about the drawing as, okay, this is going to be a MASAC part. How do I need to make this piece? What do I need? What information do I need? So that's what I'm going to do in this case right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about this as a MASAC part, and I'm going to do a drawing for it, then go out to the machine and make the part. First off, I want to do is I want to establish my zero point. And basically what I'm going to do is everywhere there is a transition, I'm going to click on it. And I have a couple ways I can do a couple places. Like right here, I can do it two ways. And I'll show you both ways out there on the machine. So as I get these dimensions here, this will work with for me. Right here, here's another point another point here another point here oh come on select the point there we go got another point right here and there we go so that gives me my points on that plane now the other dimensions I'm going to have to have is it is some diameter dimensions here so let's go to my dimensions here and the diameter here which is 5 8 the diameter here which is 375 um, the diameter here can help me that works I can use that it's the same on this side right here this right here is also 5 8 and my thread size having drawn this up I know this for a fact here just go ahead and put it here it's gonna be quarter quarter dash 28 UNC it's gonna be a class 2 fit 2a there so that's going to be my threads on this right here. That there will give me enough information to make this piece right here. So I can work with what I have here. It's got a 20 degree angle there. I can use that to make it. That's one way to do it. Now another way I could do it is to have these chamfer dimensions here. So if I just have the chamfer dimensions, which I'm going to put down here in the bottom, here to here, 46 thousandths. And it is a, let's see if I can dimension it here. 45 degree angle there and let's see what we got here we got 29 thousandths there and it's also 45 degree angle okay if I know that that's the other way I can do this so it gives me some options and we're going to take a look you can print this out take this over to the machine 
and take a look at how we where we would start with making a program on this. Okay, this is our little maze back here. It's a pretty little small machine. It's not necessarily the biggest footprint, the biggest machine ever, but I will say this much right now. I would love to have one of these in my in a building up not behind my house with a bar feeder and find some little parts for it. It is extremely, extremely efficient with how it processes everything. So let's turn it on and get it going. Okay, so power ups on the back of this thing. Let's turn this right here on. Walk around over here. And fire it up. So it's gonna go through the boot up motions just like you know any controller does. Um, one of my little quirks that is about Mazak is can't open the door to unlock the door, can't unlock the door, the power off. So you gotta wait for it to boot up before you can unlo ever open the door on it. So lights come on, got our boot, our boot screen up there. So should be any second now. And here we go. Okay, so it's ready to go here. Let's unlock our doors. So you can see it's not exactly the biggest machine ever. So it's, you know, got some limitations to what you can do on it. But it, when it really comes to doing small work, this thing is an absolute beast. It's got a parts catcher, a uh, pull eye, the full deal right here. Now, um, what we're going to do though here is we're going to start a program here. So I'm going to go to my program page here and I'm going to go to my work number here. Find an open slot here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's tied up. I'm going to go with nine here. So I'm going to type in number nine, my work number here. Nine, hit input. That's going to bring me up to a blank screen. Now I have options as to what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go to a Mesa Troll program here. And then I'm going to go about entering my material here. In this case, I'm going to make these out of carbon steel. So carbon steel for my material. OD Max is going to be 3 8 Now it wants this right here in decimal form. Two, dec two place decimal. So I'm going to give it 3 8 which is 3 8 rounded. Uh, OD Min is 0. And put there. Lance, I'm going to call it about 4 inches. And then my work face is going to be at zero here. Okay. Max RPM of the machine is 5,000. You can limit that if you want to. Not 50,000. Let me back up there and do that again. Five thousand. There you go. Feel a quick happy there. Now I'm going to go about starting to build my program from this point on. Okay, I made one change to the program here. I changed my work face to 0.1. It's going to give me 100 thousandths on the end of it here. 50 thousandths would work, you know, 100 thousandths works fine in that regard also. Now I'm going to start building my units here. First thing I'm going to do is do a facing operation on it. Spacing. Finish allowance is going to match up to what I have here. We call it point 0.1 again. Okay, so now let's go pull my tools here. So I have my material mark as carbide. It's going to pull from the data I have there. And I did carbide auto. And it's going to give me my speed here. Turn my coin on. And down the next one here. And go back up here. And it's going to give me my carbide auto, auto again there. Coin on again. There we go. Now, my start point on my X and my start point on my Z. In this case, I'm going to go start point of uh, point 0.38 for my X. Start for my Z is going to be point 0.1. The finish point of my X is going to be 0. The finish point of my Z is going to be 0. And roughness here, click on roughness, it pulls up this right here. Now you may have, you may or may not have saw these right here on a blueprint. 
This is a surface finished symbol um, that you see on some international prints here. The, the higher the number and the more triangles you see, the better the surface finish. So it kind of comes down to what you're looking for, economics or um, finish there. In this situation, we go about seven on the face here. That's got my piece there. Now, if I click on shape check, you'll see it draws up my piece. You see my zero is 100,000 sand. Click shape continue. And I got a box here showing where I'm taking that material off the end of the piece there. So that's the first part of this. Now we're going to go about building the shape for the contour there.